Dr. Arnold Beckman was an innovator. In his career, he envisioned solutions to problems and engineered those solutions into reality. Dr. Beckman was also a visionary who understood that distributing new technologies into the scientific community could create an impact much greater than he alone could. This vision has come to benefit research and medical science around the world for many decades, continuing to this day. Dr. Beckman's vision extended beyond the creation of science-enabling technologies into an understanding that philanthropic support of future scientists and engineers could exponentially benefit research and medical science across generations. Dr. Beckman's funding of science has generated new research institutes, new research buildings, and most importantly, has supported the careers of many young scientists who form part of the future of science. His philanthropic investment in science has personally and directly enabled my research here at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory through an Arnold O. Beckman Postdoctoral Award Fellowship. I am happy to continue the legacy of Dr. Beckman in how we do science and to serve as an ambassador for this great scientific training program from the Beckman Foundation. Our main goal as neuroscientists is to try to understand how specific populations of neurons in the brain control distinct aspects of behavior in an animal. I am in particular investigating brain structures that may be critical for flexible, goal-directed behaviors during dynamic decision-making, namely the orbitofrontal cortex and the dorsomedial striatum, also known as the cutty. This is important because disordered flexibility, notably in obsessive-compulsive disorder and autism spectrum, can cause severe behavioral and cognitive dysfunction. To study the function of these brain structures at the cellular and physiological level, I make use of mice, the brain of which also contain orbitofrontal cortex and dorsomedial striatum, as these structures have been conserved through evolution. In the lab, I use genetic tools packaged into viruses and injected into the live mouse brain to selectively label, target, and manipulate specific populations of neurons. I am then able to test the function of these neurons in mice while they perform operant behavior tasks that require flexible, dynamic decision-making. I am in particular studying the function of a specific population of neurons in orbitofrontal cortex that send exonal projections exclusively within the forebrain to dorsomedial striatum and other areas of cortex. For instance, in this experiment, I have selectively introduced into these neurons a light-gated protein known as channel rivopsin that can depolarize or activate neurons when exposed to blue light. I then use fiber optics that I surgically implanted into dorsomedial striatum and blue laser light to activate these neurons. In this two-sided chamber assay, stimulation of these neurons when the animal is in the left side of the chamber drives the animal to seek out this side of the chamber. This suggests these neurons carry either a positive valence or information driving the animal to perform a particular behavioral response. Similarly, in this experiment, the animal has access to two ports that it can investigate, but exploration of only one of them triggers delivery of blue laser light and stimulation of these neurons. Here again, the animal chooses to repeatedly investigate the port that results in blue laser stimulation, while largely ignoring the other port suggesting again that these neurons may encode positive valence or the drive to perform a behavioral response. I have also trained these mice to perform an operant behavior task requiring real-time decision-making. In this go -no go task, head-fixed mice learn to perform licking responses to receive a water reward when they hear one particular auditory tone, the go tone, and to withhold from making a lick response when they hear a different auditory tone, the no-go tone. Failure to withhold their response following a no-go tone triggers an air puff to the face, which is aversive. I have found that transient stimulation of these neurons causes the mice to momentarily suppress their lick response, but to respond immediately after the laser is turned off, even if they hear a no-go tone. This suggests that these neurons may be important for mediating or directing goal-directed responding. Finally, I am also able to monitor and record the activity of these neurons by introducing a calcium-sensitive protein that emits green fluorescence when neurons become active. I am then able to image the activity of these neurons through an implanted grin lens or optical cannula while the animal performs the operant decision-making behavior task. 
This allows me to monitor how these neurons naturally respond during these behaviors. The Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation, through the Arnold O. Beckman Postdoctoral Award, has made it possible for me to conduct this neuroscience research at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Without the support from the award, none of this work could have taken place. The support guaranteed the necessary equipment and research costs, including salary. This is the power of the philanthropic investment in science that Dr. Beckman envisioned. The research enabling legacy of Dr. Beckman will continue to be passed down through those of us who have been fortunate enough to benefit from it.